Hey guys, this is Dr. Kate Key, oral and maxillofacial surgeon and today we are going to discuss the principles of incision and drainage. Why is incision and drainage carried out in the first place? Because when there is an acute dentoalveolar infection or a fascial space abscess, incision and drainage provides a way for the toxic purulent material to get out. This relieves the pressure in the tissues. You see, when there is pus, a lot of pressure builds up inside the tissues and this creates pressure necrosis. So when the pus is let out, it decompresses the tissues and allows better perfusion of blood to the area. In this way, the antibiotics that are given to the patient and other immunity factors in the blood can actually reach the tissues because of the better blood perfusion. This is why antibiotics alone are not effective without evacuation of the pus. There are certain principles to follow with incision and drainage the ideal time to perform incision and drainage is when the abscess is fluctuant and before it ruptures spontaneously. When the pus accumulates in the soft tissues and when the swelling is pressed between the thumb and middle finger, there is a wave-like movement of the fluid inside the abscess. This is called as fluctuance. The incision should be made in healthy skin and mucosa when possible. If it is placed at the site of maximum fluctuance where the tissues are necrotic, it will result in an anesthetic scar. So always incise in healthy skin and mucosa. The incision should be planned such that the injury of ducts like Wharton's duct, Stenson's duct and large vessels and nerves is avoided. In this image you can see for the drainage of the sublingual abscess, the incision is made parallel to the submandibular duct and the lingual nerve. This is just an example. This principle has to be followed in every case. The incision is performed superficially at the lowest point of the accumulation, means in a dependent position. This will encourage drainage of the pus by gravity. The incision is not performed in areas that are noticeable. If possible, it is performed intraorally. If it is not possible to place it intraorally, it should be placed in an aesthetically acceptable area such as under the shadow of the jaw or in a natural skin fold or skin crease. The area of the abscess should be cleaned with an antiseptic solution before making an incision. When there is an abscess, sometimes the areas of the pus are in different compartments, meaning there are different locules of pus inside the abscess cavity. So with a closed hemostat or finger, blunt dissection should be carried out through deeper tissues and all portions of the abscess cavity should be explored. All of the locules should be broken so that all of the pus in the different compartments will be evacuated. This also means that the dissection should be extended to the roots of the teeth that were responsible for the infection. So initially the hemostat is inserted into the cavity of the abscess with closed beaks and withdrawn again with open beaks. At the same time as the blunt dissection is being performed, the soft tissues of the region are gently massaged. So this will help with evacuation of the pus. After the abscess is drained, a sterile latex drain should be placed and it should be stabilized with sutures. The drain is placed so that any new pus that accumulates will come out through the drain. But the important thing is that these drains should not be placed for an overly extended period. They should be removed when drainage is minimal because if we keep it there for a long time, the presence of the drain itself can produce some exudate and it can become a portal for secondary bacterial infection. The wound margins should be cleaned every day under sterile conditions to remove the clots and debris. Sometimes the abscess could be intraalveolar like this at the apical region of the tooth. In this case, the aim is to relieve the patient of pain and then saving the tooth, first drainage is attempted through the root canal. If drainage through the root canal is not possible, then treatment consists of trephination or fenestration of the alveolar bone using a round burr at slow speed. But before attempting this, the position of the apex is established with a radiograph. This procedure results in drainage of the exudate and relief of pain. After completion, the wound is sutured. Placement of rubber drain here is not necessary. So these were the basic principles of incision and drainage. I hope you liked this video and if you did, 
please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss the notifications of the videos that I post. So I'll see you very soon. Bye.